All right, welcome back to Zircon series of video tutorials. This is Fab Beats 101. So we're going to be taking a look at how to make a simple drum beat in FL Studio that's uh, groovy. Anyway, first thing I always do is go to the master track and then throw a limiter on it. In this case, we're going to use TLS Pocket Limiter. That's a free plugin. I highly recommend it. Um, the reason for this is that it prevents any audio from going above zero decibels. That's the digital limit. Um, if you go above that, that's clipping. The other reason to have it on there is just because if there's any sort of big spike in audio, you know, plug-in just spits out something weird, a noise burst, um, it'll probably protect your ears a little bit. Because programs like FL Studio can actually go above zero decibels uh, because they run at a higher bit resolution. So anyway, always put a limiter on. So now that we have that there, uh, let's start with uh, constructing a beat. So I'm going to go into the samples folder here, and let's see. We have Smoker's Relight. This is an awesome collection from eLab. I think it's now called Equipped Music, but anyway, let's browse through. Kind of like that one. You can see how easy it is to just browse and sample, you know, uh, tons and tons of WAV files. This is one of the reasons I really love FL Studio. Okay, I kind of like these two. So one of the things you can do, of course, is use the layer tool to put them both together. Now one of them has a little bit of a vinyl sound to it, it sounds like. It's the first one. So I might try to replace that. Okay, cool. So now that we have a kick, let's get a snare. Scrolling up, scrolling up, scrolling up. And snare drums, here we go. Now I kind of want something with a lot of thwap, but not too much of a kind of a clap sound layered in. It's pretty cool. Now let's sequence a basic beat. As you can see, we have the swing control up here. That's boring. That's better but I'm not sure I like that snare sound. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, next step is to throw some effects onto the kicks. Make them a little dirtier. So let's see, Blood Overdrive. We'll put the snare on its own mixer track too. Okay, so this is kind of a basic beat. You can do as many variations as you want, but we're going to fill it out first with some hats. So, go to the hi hat closed folder. open hi-hat somewhere. So this can go on this beat, but we want it to cut off, so we'll have cut by channel 5, and we'll call this 5, thus, oops, there we go. Now it cuts off exactly on that fourth beat. And for the hi-hats too, we'll put them on their own mixer track. And maybe just bring out the high end a little bit on those. Okay. So now that we have a basic beat, whoops, we're in pattern six for some reason. Okay, that's cool too. Um, create a variation of it. Clone selected. Put those on the alternate measures, measures two and four. How 
out. Ah, I like the sound of that. Edit the velocity a little bit. Now we need some sort of a fill snare sound. That's kind of too heavy, so why don't we look at the Defnick folder? Yes. Defnick sent me some of his samples at one point when I had uh, lost all mine. I still use these. Now we can create a variation of a variation. Clone that pattern here. So now we have an exact duplicate. And let's try kind of doing this off the top of my head. So uh, how about this? Not sure how this is going to sound. What we'll do here is on the kick, open up the piano roll and add a sort of a triplet sixteenth fill at the end. Give it a little unique flam there. So now we have this. This is pretty nice so far, but we can do even more to create variations on it. So I create a new pattern that's going to be layered on the old pattern. Now let's take this clap and we'll have it go every other fourth beat. So that adds a little bit more interest to it. And then let's put some reverb on the clap. And then lastly, now that we have a sort of a, a pretty filled in basic pattern, what I like to call sort of the foundation for the beat, we can layer even more stuff on top using loops. So I'm gonna take a look at some of these, uh, let's see here, finalistics loops or kits. Here we go. So that's 80 BPM. Let's see what the slicer does. The slicer thinks it's 120, okay. That's cool. Completely wrong. Anyway, luckily we have the BPM in the file name. So how's that sound? Doesn't really have the same swing to it. Luckily, in the piano roll, we can use the 16 drummer swing one quantize setting. Hit OK. Now we have It's kind of got a little bit of a loose feel to it. Not every hit is perfectly syncing, but that's a good thing. So now we're going to put that on its own mixer track. I don't really want to hear the bass drum on that loop because we have our own. We'll set this to a high pass. So we're kind of cutting out the lower frequencies. And then now that we have that, I'm going to add a little bit of a lo-fi effect to it. So here's another free plugin. It's called Lo-Fi Plus by North Pole. You can pick this up on KVR Audio. Kind of dirtying it up a little bit, we'll lower the volume. You can experiment with effects in real time, of course, to see what works and what doesn't. The delay doesn't really have the swing to it, that's not going to work. But maybe a little bit more reverb. We'll add a fill to it. 
to it. Whoops. Same kind of triplet 16th feel that we had on the bass drum. Except we're going to start it here. With a nice velocity swell. Let's see what we got. Okay, so that's the basics on how to create a fat beat in FL Studio. As you can see, it really takes no time at all. I've only added very basic effects. I mean, you could really go further, add compression, drum bussing. You could keep adding loops to it, you know, you could probably throw in some shakers and percussion. In fact, let's just do that for fun. There you have it. I hope to see you next time. Probably going to be making a follow-up to this video. Hope you enjoyed it.